Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. The Holy Spirit is a very well-known concept within Christianity, but what about Islam? Does Islam mention the Holy Spirit at all? We look at the Quran. Joining me is Dr. Shabir Ali from the Islamic Information Center. Dr. Shabir, tell me about the Holy Spirit. Is there any mention of it in the Quran? Well, yes. Uh, more technically, um, the Quran mentions uh, Ruhul Qudus, which uh, literally would mean the spirit of holiness. And uh, there uh, are a few mentions of that term in the Quran. Uh, most often, Ruh or spirit is mentioned in the Quran without uh, the extension uh, spirit of holiness. Uh, but nonetheless, we are talking about a spirit that is holy, uh, that is uh, close to God and uh, in, in what way way this relates directly to God, uh, this is not entirely spelled out uh, in the Quran. But the Quran itself uh, cautions us by saying, yes, they ask you concerning the spirit. Uh, say the spirit is by uh, the command of my Lord, or the spirit is from among the affairs of uh, my Lord. And you have not been given of knowledge except a little. Uh, so mm -hmm. that cautions us uh, from thinking we know much about the Holy Spirit. Whatever mm -hmm. else is said about uh, the spirit in the Quran, uh, we must uh, fall back on the uh, the uh, humble position of saying that we, we don't really know much about the spirit. So why do you think the Quran includes mention of the spirit? Is it because perhaps that idea was already floating around uh, due to some Christian uh, influences in the, in the region? It could be. It could be. Though the Quran hardly... Um, uh, speaks of the the Christian beliefs concerning this, not not directly in any case, uh, but the very form of what I just recited shows that people were asking the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him about the spirit, and he had mm -hmm. to respond, and and the Quran is giving him this response uh, to disclaim knowledge about this. Now, in in the background, we have uh, much mention of the spirit of God in the Old Testament, and because most of the Old Testament is in Hebrew, um, it will be uh, interesting to think about uh, the Hebrew word. Now, the Hebrew word ruach uh, for uh, spirit in the uh, Old Testament, uh, basically we can say the Tanakh or the Jewish Bible, uh, the Hebrew word there uh, can mean a spirit, but could also mean a wind. Uh, so, for example, at the beginning of the book of Genesis, where it says that uh, a, a spirit from God was hovering over the waters of the deep, uh, some translators may say a wind from God was hovering, because the word can have both meanings. Uh, now, in Arabic, ruh uh, is uh, reserved, it seems, for the spiritual entity and uh, or a spiritual kind uh, and rih. Uh, uh, a slightly different pronunciation, but uh, almost from the same root word, uh, would represent the physical wind. Mm -hmm. so, so in the Quran, at least, when it mentions ruh, uh, we know that we're talking about a spirit, something spiritual here. Mm -hmm. So is it a godlike figure? What is it? What is this? Spirit? Well, I mean, Islam I know that you does, said that we, we mm. it's not really clear what it is. Yeah, Islam does not admit of any uh, godlike figure. To, in Islam, there's a very clear dichotomy between God and his creatures. Everyone other than mm -hmm. God are his creatures. Uh, so uh, the, the Quran even says, "Laisa uh, kamithlihi shay." There is nothing like unto him. And in what in what most uh, Muslims have uh, uh, memorized, "Walam yakul lahu kufhuan ahad." There is none equal unto him. So who is this spirit then? Uh, we find mention of the spirit along with angels sometimes. Uh, like we have just uh, finished the month of Ramadan, in which we have the occurrence of the month uh, of the night of Qadr uh, and the night of determination. Uh, on which it is said according to the 97th chapter of the Quran, uh, the, the angels and the spirit descend therein during that night. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and they come, they uh, come uh, they come from their Lord with every, um, 
uh, commandment. So it mm -hmm. looks like uh, the, the spirit, it's not called the spirit of holiness in this particular verse, but nonetheless, uh, the, the spirit is said to come with the command from God along with the angels. So mm -hmm. is this an angel uh, himself, uh, but he gets special mention because of his rank among the angels? Or, uh, it, it, or it, is he like a different sort of spirit than the angels? And, and God knows best, but, but we mm -hmm. wouldn't equate him with God. Uh, mm -hmm. Moreover, we are shown uh, on occasion that the spirit is subordinate to God. For uh, example, on the day of judgment, it is said in the 78th chapter, uh, the, the spirit and the angels uh, will stand in rows uh, or in a row uh, before God. And none of them could speak except uh, anyone to whom uh, the beneficent God gives permission to speak. And then too, uh, they must uh, speak the truth when they are prompted. Uh, so this shows that the spirit that is spoken about in the Quran is subordinate uh, to God. Is there any um, inclination towards thinking that Gabriel, the angel Gabriel, could be the spirit? Uh, there, this equation has been made by some Muslim scholars. How? By putting two verses together. One verse uh, says that uh, the, uh, the spirit of holiness uh, is the one who reveals the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad on whom be peace. And then another verse of the Quran says that uh, it is the angel Gabriel who reveals it to the heart of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So in a simple way, uh, some have uh, equated the two. Gabriel, therefore, is the Holy Spirit. But I don't think mm -hmm. that's a necessary equation because uh, it could be that uh, both have a role. If, if the spirit spoken about and Gabriel are two different spirits, let's put it this way, because Gabriel too was an angel as a spirit type being. Uh, so if, if they're two different spirits, then it could be that each one of them has uh, a particular role or function in the whole process of revealing the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and, mm -hmm. and God knows best. In the end, we have to say we, we know uh, uh, not about the spirit except a little. Mm -hmm. Tell me about um, the spirit's role in uh, the story of Mary. Yeah, so the Quran says that Mary guarded her chastity in the 67th chapter of the Quran, the 66th chapter of the Quran, uh, that, uh, that Mary guarded her uh, chastity and then uh, uh, then we, we blow into it of our spirit uh, or from our spirit. Uh, so what does that mean? And uh, no one has been able to explain that. And uh, it is uh, a mystery from a Muslim point of view, because as we said, we're, we're not going to uh, equate another uh, being with God. Uh, so, uh, and at the same time, we don't want to deny anything that the Quran has actually said. Uh, so we can say that something here is mysterious. Somehow there is a spirit from God that goes into Mary and uh, that uh, eventually uh, allows uh, Mary to have this child. But at the mm -hmm. same time, let me add, Sophia, that uh, when the Quran describes the creation of Adam uh, and says that God formed him from the dust of the earth, then it says that the same thing that God breathed into him of his spirit. So mm -hmm. what, we, we, we do not take that to mean that Adam is somehow divine, but we say that somehow the human being has something uh, that is uh, uh, somehow uh, related to God without being God himself. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Shabir, do you think that the spirit plays a particular role within these narratives? Why is the spirit introduced in, in certain stories? Yeah, in, in the Bible, the role of the Spirit is uh, more prominent. We find that in the Old Testament in particular, the Holy Spirit would uh, uh, come upon a person and then that, uh, and, and here saying the Holy Spirit is anachronistic because the, putting it in these terms, that, that's a New Testament way of doing it. Okay. Uh, in, in the Old Testament, uh, uh, the, the, we don't have this title, the Holy Spirit, uh, at least according to James Charlesworth in his book, Jesus 
Jesus and the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, uh, so the, the Spirit is spoken about as if this is a sort of power that comes out from God and then somehow engulfs a person or infuses a person so that the person then performs some miraculous or some outstanding deed. It could be a craftsman or it could be Samson with his power uh, that does a certain performance uh, following from this infusion uh, of the Spirit from from God. Uh, in the New Testament, the Spirit has uh, a, a role of uh, consoling the believers, of prompting them to give proper evidence uh, and so on, so they don't have to uh, rehearse in advance what they're going to say when they're called into a court of law. Uh, so the Spirit has a very um, uh, prominent presence in, in the New Testament. Now, in the Quran, mm -hmm. uh, it does not uh, uh, sh uh, seem that the, the Holy Spirit uh, have this kind of prominent role, though there is a, a verse in the 58th chapter of the Quran where it says about the believers, uh, God is going to uh, uh, aid the believers with the spirit from him. Uh, interestingly, that's something similar to what the Quran says God does with Jesus, that uh, God aided Jesus. We have uh, uh, supported him uh, with the uh, the spirit of holiness. We'll leave it at that, Dr. Sabir. Thank you for your thoughts. <laughs> You're welcome.